I'm thinking about it. I grieve a little bit in my spirit. I grieve. I get some day wounds. <laughs> I like I should call out Ashley. Ask me to take a postpone. Take <laughs> a postpone, Ashley. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Can I hide under your desk? For real. I'm serious. I don't want. I don't want to understand this. God did not promise me no understanding. He promised me, promised me a day wound. No, he didn't. <laughs> you know that you promised you a day wound, right? God didn't promise me no understanding. What he did promise me is peace that surpasses it. See, all y'all read the scripture and y'all don't think, get it. Y'all know, you, you know why I know you don't get it? Because I didn't until about 15 seconds ago when I first said it. This is an all you're getting, getting understanding in the Old Testament. But then when you're New Testament, after all that, after all that and done, now that I'll give you a peace that surpasses it. Philippians 4 6. But why do I need us? Why do I need aim if you're going to surpass it? Jenny, when I got some shoes, you bought 4,000 pairs of shoes? Them is nice. Them is nice. You bought 4,000 pairs of shoes? I get peace of peace shoes. Now, I get peace shoes. But then I got your peace shoes. They so pretty. What do I need all these shoes for? I want to spend all my money because I'm dumb on a whole bunch of Buddhas. I mean shoes. And I came out with a whole bunch of boots with shoes. Stop saying that, Jenny. You came out with a whole bunch of shoes, right? And God give you a peace that surpasses all understanding, right? The 16, the 16 tell me, give me peace shoes. Excuse me, let's go. King James, for those that um, know the word of God, to this, blah, blah, blah. God, just charge your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So I, I'll away the shoes of uh, peace. Peace conquers your shoes. Uh, peace conquers your understanding. Peace conquers Martins. Uh, and it ain't, they're not really selling to understand that Martins. I was just making a point. You would go around the world, but drag a cross, a, a wooden cross around the world in the heat, stinking, and you ain't got no deodorant. That man had, uh, he had shoes. He had shoes, excuse me. He had um, a bell bottom pants. He had this Waldo looking shirt. Not sweater, not turn neck shirt, right? And he had his hair. He had his hair, because wow, it was, it was worse than mine. So he had his hair, and he's grabbing this big one cross with on wheels. Now I just want to, wait, excuse me. If Jesus crossed, they had no wheels. Why do you think girls can have wheels? If you want to mimic the crucifixion, and when you gonna die? Does that mean? I know some people wanna ask me, when you gonna shut up, Jamie? Never. So when you gonna die? When was he gonna die? He was gonna carry the cross around the world. If you wanna do what Jesus did, then do it completely. Otherwise, you are distorting the truth, you Antichrist. Some people like wearing crosses. You carry your cross around the world with you, aren't you? You're not doing it publicly. He did it in front of everybody. The Antichrist will come. We might call him the Antichrist because the Antichrist will come and do it and try to mimic it in front of everybody. You are walking around the world with a cross barefoot. Jesus was not. I don't know if he's barefoot or not. I want to say that. Probably was. I don't know. But anyway, you carry your cross all the way around the world. My point is, you're carrying it. You're pulling it. It's on wheels like you. Like you at Skate 22. Like you at the skate park. It's on wheels. You ain't got no wheels, but your cross got wheels. Why? Cause it make it more comfortable for you, right? Cause you're not wanting to drag no wheel cross around with them. Where you put your money at? Where you wilded at? And wait, when you gonna die? It sounds rude. It sounds dead. Then Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. Who are you following? I just see you carrying cross on wheels. Cross on wheels. Cross on wheels. Cross on wheels, cross on wheels, cross on wheels, cross on wheels. You need to be saying, cross out my will, cross out my will, cross out my will. But how many of you come out of my I know that man ain't there yet. Yeah, how many of you have said, nevertheless, this week, already. How many of you have stepped up and said, nevertheless, about anything, about any topic? Recently. Nevertheless, not my will, come on, but thy will be done. No, you can't say, nevertheless, not my will, because you got your cross, and it's on wheels. He said, pick up your cross. To go mimic Christ, you got to pick it up. It's on, it's on wheels, so it's on ram. I can't carry it unless it's on wheels, then you're not going to be carrying it. Physically. Cross on wheels, cross on wheels. That's not a song, y'all. It really isn't. <laughs> it's not. I didn't make it stuff up. I make songs up. You make Buddha up. He made up his cross on wheels. If I do something, it's an evil generation, just evil. Cause everybody's doing something, but nobody's doing what they should do. 
Who's the first person I blame? Me. Why? Because judgment starts in the household of faith. Am I the household of faith? Did God give me the measure of faith? Then I am my household, my skin. It comes in the housing of the, the measure of faith. I got faith inside of me. And I claim that faith. If I ask you if you got faith, blah, 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 you say yes, blah, blah, then you are now the household of faith. Huh? So judgment starts in the household of faith. Huh? Right? So, so blah, 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 then why do I see crosses on wheels around you? Cross on wheels, 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 cross on wheels. I could be a jingle writer. <laughs> That's a talent. That's what my talent. Ain't no talent. <laughs> I just see dumb stuff and make up songs about it. The dumb is the easier the song. Cross on wheels. Wheels is for the ease of it. Y'all remember the story, right? Uh, the, uh, the name was Ooze, right? Ooze, E Z U Z or E Z or something like that. E U U Z, whatever, right? Uh, they were they put the Ark of the Covenant on the cart, right? That started pulling it, uh, and the Bible says they drove it. So, blah, blah. And, uh, you don't realize uh, the, 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 the script of writing. Uh, God said it's not driving like oh they just drove it, right? No, when you find out, when you when you when you want to know, God will show you. I went down to Mark, uh, right? Uh, and the book of Mark. It says when Jesus was driven, the Holy Spirit drove Jesus in the wilderness. It's with that force that they drove uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, because they were looking to get it someplace. Uh, they were looking to take the Ark of the Covenant someplace. Uh, it was in a place that they did not want to be in. So what did they do? They put it on a new cart uh, with the wheels. I've gone 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 wheels. And what happens is, whatever you put of God, right? Uh, whatever you put that belongs to God, it's always too grand for you. It's a passion. You so it will always become unsteady, right? When you wheel it, and the moment the art came unsteady on the cart with it, right? Because they were doing wheels, right? What happened? My ooze tried to steady it. You can never steady it, steady God. Bye bye bye. Could it be never steady, steady God? Bye bye. And then they tried to steady it, and immediately God killed it. Bible say God struck him, and that, and there he died. Of God to our life. Okay, hurry up, God. I want this lesson. I want to pick. Hurry up, God. Hurry up, God. Hurry up, God. The game is coming on tonight. Hurry up, God. Hurry up, God. Okay, God, I can't be up here long because I know the people, Betty, yes, I know the people that want to see the football game, right? So I want to make sure that I do a sermon that's quick. Hurry up. Hurry up, God. I'm going to keep them any longer than need be. Forget that it's a church, it's like a Jamie's old church. Jamie's old church used to have church. We would be in church 10 hours a day on Sunday. Don't play with me. I would get there at 9.30 in the morning. I would leave at 10.30 at night. All day long. And I loved it. And when it didn't happen, I was angry. But now I got church for two hours. <laughs> oh, when we're going to sit down, I'll see her from this crazy worship. Because you want to come to a service where you are sitting down uh, and where you are being served. Blah, blah, blah. And where you can look up at the movie theater uh, or the entertainment in front of you. You want to be entertained. Uh, entertained. Uh, you want to watch what's going on in front of you. And you will not participate in the worship. Uh, but what you want to do uh, is sit down. So when the worship team comes before you, it feels like they are worshiping you. Do you understand the visual of it? If the worship team uh, stands up, the stands up and we're there praising God, and we are standing up with them, it looks like we're worshiping. If you look at the system of it, artistically, look at it, the whole 360 degree diagram, or diorama, whatever, of it, spin around with it, look at your church, right? When you are worshiping, when the church, wor uh, the church is worshiping, then that, uh, you see, right? But sit down and then look around and see what it looks like. And you sit down, right, and you're seated in your seats, right, and the worship team is up, and the praise of God, praise of God, praise of God, I don't care what nobody says, it looks to you from your perspective, that it can look to me from my perspective that they are worshiping me. You gotta be careful. It's hard, right, because I'm about in my mind that I created the diorama, not about I went back to earth. I went back to earth in my mind. On a timeline. When I went back to earth. And I placed Abraham outside of it. Selah. And God said, get out of your, um, 
get from your country and from your father's house, right? So as long as I step outside the country, the country line, because my father's house is inside the country, as long as I step outside the line, I'm fine, right? So I'm looking at it, everyone's living in Canaan. What would be the promised land? Get out, of, get out of your father's house and from your country. What we don't realize is if you calculate, right? Abraham left and he's dragging Lot behind him. God sucked Abraham out, right? And then Abraham sucked, right? A, a lot out too. I don't know if you didn't think like Abraham, a lot would, get, would not get taken care of, right? Because he had terror, right? And he also had Nahor. <laughs> Or ran. I forget which brother died. But uh, Lot's father died. We don't know why. We don't know how. But Lot's father died. Now, whatever it is, Lot's father died, and whatever it could have been, this is the offspring of it. I don't think Abraham cared because Abraham uh, sucked that thing right out of earth with him. Does he really care about your nephew? You could have left him there with them. Because God, you put yourself and you put your nephew in trouble when you bring your nephew with you because God did not tell you to bring your nephew with you. God said, get out. And the problem that I have, we think God did not warn Abraham. Abraham was warned because it came a point in time where Lot and Abraham had to separate because Lot's men and Abraham's men could not stop fighting. It wasn't the sheep and the, the, the goats and everything like that. But Lot's men, Lot's grown men who had verbal skills could not get along. Now that just tells me, right, that something's going on. Right, that something's going on. Right, here we cannot get along. We cannot agree. Separation. You brought Lot out of earth, then you separated from him, right? But then Lot went his way, you said choose which part of the land to take, right? Lot obviously chose the lusher, greener place, which was Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham said, okay, I'll stay here, which looked like wilderness, but really wasn't. It was really the promise. So Abraham stayed there. But here's the thing, God made, I'm telling you, I believe God allowed those men not to get along. So at one point, so right, they're ready to kill each other, right? It's okay, we can't take this anymore. They're gonna kill themselves, let's separate, right? Once they did, here's the thing, Lot kept getting in trouble and Abraham kept doing what? Rescuing him because you are connected to him. Did God tell you to connect to him? Is that your son? That is not your son. Then why are you connected to sin? Lot had not been made, uh, given a promise, right? And Lot had not shown any um, desire, right, of wanting to follow God, right? So, so of course they're not going to get along, right? You have brought out, of course the men are not going to get along. You have brought out men of God and men of Ur, and I tried to make them mingle. Ur and God will not mingle, for God is truly the Alpha and the Omega. God began it and finished it, but as long as you bring the Ur with you, and then like, you are giving, you, are, you may be praising God, you may be praising God, but you are still paying homage to Ur, and, uh, and God will not share his throne with anybody. You can not ask God help me in one mouth uh, and in the next mouth go about seek her for what you need you cannot do it and so what happened was uh, the two nations started struggling against each other because Abraham though he had no kid was already a nation why I hear God right now because the angel told uh, Abraham uh, I'm sorry, the angel told Rebecca he said two nations struggle in her womb Esau and Jacob from the beginning from utero they were called nations. They were never called. These ain't two babies struggling in the moon. Who cares? They said two nations? Oh, we gotta fix this. nations that are trying to walk together, right? Uh, that's why he said, but how can two walk together? That's what Amos chapter 2 says, right? Except they agree, right? Uh, that's what he said to you and your wife. Uh, how can two walk together? Why are me and my wife not get along? Why how, how can two walk together? Why are me and my um this woman not get along? Why can two walk together? How can I be and this person get along? How can two walk together except they agree? You're not agreeing. So as one tries to walk left, the other one tries to walk right. Every time you turn around, there will be contention and there will be aggravation within the relationship. Because you and you don't agree. I'll give you all the time. You agree in God and what God is saying. 
Does she have an understanding that I'm about that the world comes to you first, right? And then you bring the word to her. That she ought to submit. Do you not agree? All right, not to submit to God. Because who's going to, uh, who is going to uh, submit? Who is going to, I mean, there's a, oh, the, 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 he's got two nations, right? Walking alongside them. They're walking together, right? Lot and Abraham can walk together because this is Abraham, uh, um, um, what was it? Uh, McAllister and Lot McAllister. So they have some sort of a landing point. I'm, I'm giving last things, but it's kind of weird because they're, they're, they're both, both from the same family. But just because the two men get along doesn't mean their men will get along. And I'll be a seed of contention because you're paying homage to one uh, country or uh, one nation, and you are, but you're also trying, you're asking, you're paying tithes to another. You cannot do that. That's why this nation is, is a mess. It's falling. God said falling. It's falling. Because we're paying tithes to one nation and paying taxes to another. What is wrong with you? It's this place has been falling since Saul was in um, order. You slowly weaned God off of you. And you're mad because he won't help you. You specifically, because he's helping me. Because I worship him. You weed God off of you. So what's happening? What they did, what they did. They told him, they said, God, you're too loud for us. So what we going to tell Moses, he said, no. They said, Moses, tell God you're too loud for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to send you up the mountain, right? Because at that point, they had already been hearing from God and seeing God personally, right? They had the manna and everything else, personal work. They said, no, 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 God, you're too close and you're too loud. We're going to send Moses up there. Moses is going to send you, we're going to send you up there. You talk to God. Tell him he's too loud for us and then he, he give you word and you come back now, right? So God said, okay, I will become the unseen God, right? Because they had lunch with God at one point. The elders and everybody on the mountain. I don't know if he was unseen God before that. He might have been. He might have been unseen for you. Adam walking in a cooler day, he's having lunch with him. They had chicken and, and, and biscuits. And some, and some Kool-Aid. Tell me good Kool-Aid, I, I imagine. I don't know, I ain't been there. You? Anyway, so... <laughs> I can make recommendations on Kool-Aid. I don't want to be sweet enough. I don't know that I shouldn't have it. Nah, that's the land of milk and honey. We're going to be drinking milk and honey. Okay, anyway, whatever. I like this last little time. <laughs> they told God he was too loud and too boisterous. So what they said is, uh, we don't want to see him anymore, right? Because we're going we to tell you, Moses. I mean, you're going to go up there. You're going to be our what? I'll speak for me. Help me out. I'll advocate. They made Moses the advocate when Jesus was Jesus the advocate when it was come to a thousand years later. They said, you go up and you talk to us and you come back down. What is that? An advocate. What is that? An intercessor. What is that? Communication is prayer. Prayer is communication to God. Prayer is communication to God. If you put somebody in between you, right, and God, in the uh, communication to God, then what you are doing is you are making that your intercessor. They made Moses their intercessor and advocate. That's why Moses killed him. That's why Moses basically killed himself. Because nobody will be able to handle being the advocate and intercessor for a group of people. So what he did was he killed himself. Uh, he did. He stepped outside of God's uh, timing and out of God's word. Right? He killed himself. Nobody can handle that. You make anybody your Jesus, they will kill themselves in your life. It's true. That's why it's very important that husbands and wives stay balanced. I said I'm trying to get as much word as I can. You say balance, because if you're not balanced, right? You will then, you will make somebody your advocate and intercessor, right? There's nobody that's my intermediary between me and God. Nobody. You know how you know that that person's your 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 your, your intermediary between you and God? Let God tell you to say something and you change the words. Let God tell you to say something to them and you you you, you buffer it. I thought, like, ah! You God tell me to tell you something about TV. No, 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 Last, it's funny, I didn't know David Lewis was speaking. Last what? Last, anybody know David Lewis was last him? Last Monday, last two thousand days of text what message at like 6.30 in the morning. You pregnant, you carrying. And that's it. I said, God, should, should I tell him now that he's going to go through a lot of pain? Because pregnancy is beautiful because it produces a child, but there's a lot of travail in between there. Should I tell him now? He's going to get uncomfortable. 
You said no. I didn't tell you to say that. I said, okay. You kept going. I'm not about to hide it. Would you be hiding it because he's my pastor? No. They said, God, we don't want you. And they sent word that we they didn't want him. They didn't want him speaking to them. And they sent word. Uh, we don't want personal word with you. And they sent word up the mountain in the form of Moses. And you, and still to this day, people ask it, why does God just tell me automatically, er, 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 because you come from, er, 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 and if you read the Bible, er, 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 you wouldn't be standing in front of me, barking like a dog, asking dumb questions. Er, 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 I can tell you it's really hard when the James told me said this is now my new family. This is now new. This is now the one I want. Then y'all forgot of y'all. Y'all tried to forgot all y'all life completely because that was God not being a person, the God that you pray to or worship. Then you said, okay, God, we don't want you as our king, right? They said that in First Samuel, right? We need a new king, right? Samuel said, don't do this. They said we need a king, a king that we can see. We need a king like other nations. Other nations can see their king. We need a king. So you don't want to see the God. The God said, I don't know, he's already visible, visual to them. But I guess they couldn't see the king side. So they said, no, 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 no. We don't want to see this God. But we want to see the king, which was a God that we could see. Saying they did not want to see or have God in their life. We want you to be the provider, Jehovah Jireh. Be the provider, but we don't want to see your face. And now people to this day, I ask the same why I can't say God? Hey, 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 hey. Cause you had to honk it like a seagull, or bark it like a dog. Long, 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 long. But you know that better, 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 better. Pick a animal and stay, stay the animal. And stop barking at me like a dog. I am not God, and I will not show you anything that He has given me unless He tells me to. Only tell people what God tells me to. Who tell me tell them? I tell them nothing. Yes, I do walk away from people while they're talking. Absolutely, if God ain't telling me to tell you nothing, you ain't, you're not interested anyway. You are not interested in God. You are interested in making a spectacle of me and attacking me and coming against what God has already given me. And I'm not laying up for myself treasures in heaven so that I can bring them back down here for you to scrutinize and tell me that they don't exist and affect my faith in it. Absolutely not. Come on. You want some uh, questions? You got questions? Asshole spirit. He's been waiting for you for years. Is that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, which means I gotta die. In the fellowship of his suffering, which means I'm gonna suffer and die. Be made conformable, which means after, but before I do that, they can pull me apart like taffy unto his death. I gotta die again. Hallelujah. That's my, that's my answer for you. You want that? You want that, God? It's so evil what people do. What they will do is they say, okay, I don't want the God that I can see and I don't want the king that I can't see. What I want is this thing here. I want to make this thing. And so what they do is they know a God before them. Now they have a God, right, so that they can see, right, or hear from. Which is what they ask for, right? So we chant, 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 boo, 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 to a God that we cannot see or hear from, right? And then we have, excuse me, a king, all right? And we have a, a God that we can see. So I want a king that we can see and a God that we can, a God that we can see and a king that we can. Either way, they got Buddha. They got exactly what they asked for in a Buddha. In a booty, in a booty. And they're mad about it. Well, Jamie, you're Christian. Why, do, why is it like this? Well, what, what you gonna do when you get home? I'm gonna worship my boo love. I'm gonna smash my head with it over and over again. Then you got what you deserve. I don't do that. I have fun. You do that. Because you got a lot of time on your hands. Ain't that my God I ain't spending doing that. You told God that you did not want to see him. Back in the Bible. And you wonder why you can't see him. He said, wait, wait at books down the road. We wanna we got we wanna see the king part of them though. We wanna see the king part. And when God was not revealing to then come back and then lay himself down people mold them into the image that you want to see. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything graven. Any likeness of anything that is in heaven above on the earth beneath, because you don't own any of that. Only any of that. Or in the waters under the earth. What you want to do is take a graven image, make it and worship it and have it do all, um, all your deeds for you. That's how Buddha's disgusting. 
one disgusting image. People need to be enlightened about it. I never knew something so stupid to make people so dumb. To do, I'm serious. I'm, what am I supposed to do? I have a soda can. I have a whole bunch of soda cans. I can bang them for you, but I won't knock them over. But I have a whole bunch of soda cans sitting right here. How about I, I, I take one soda can and start with you? It's a like can that is not on it. It's green, red, and white, at least the Christmas color. The co complementary colors and the contrasting at the same time. If I put green and red together, they'll make mud. Just like your Buddha. What shall I worship to get the benefits that you get? I don't even worship my God, right? And I get all of my God. The windows of heaven are open, right? And I get one, one blessing that I can't but receive. I told y'all, so I brought my pastor walking down the street and his just blessing to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Pop him in the head. <laughs> not really, not like not not to hurt him, because you know he's awesome and I have much respect for him, but I want to get hit with a blessing so hard. <laughs> then he laying with his arms out. Ooh, and he's gonna get his feet out looking like a starfish. And he's knocked out on the ground. I want to get knocked out by a blessing. Now it's hot outside, so I told somebody or myself to go and get him and pick him up off the ground. But I want to get knocked out by a blessing. I do, I want to get knocked out by it. This is kind of fun me whole spear has, right? What fun you can do with your Buddha has? Something that you get uh, as a benefit from worshiping Buddha. I say this because I, I, I see it. I see that, that I, I, I thought on, you know what, 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 what's God got to do with it? It doesn't matter how much they long they worship their Buddha. And I said, oh, really? You would be a good Christian if you wasn't stupid. What do you want me to say? The truth. It's the, it's the truth. It's the truth. Uh, that's the truth. It's the truth. Because they took God and they said, let's look about. We need to be made conformable to, to Jesus Christ's death. What we wanted to do, right, was make God conformable to our wants and desires in life. And Jesus said, no, you be conformable to my death. And what he did was he came here and demonstrated death for us. And they were! We were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He demonstrated it. But there's something in each one of us that wants to take us back to earth, right? To very, very easy, right? Because, mm -hmm, <laughs> because the idol worshiping thing comes from earth. I said, if they had a, if they had a moon god, why do they need an idol? I just asked Holy Spirit that. If they had a moon god, that's what I was kind of like, uh, 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 pause it for a second. Because I, 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 if I had a moon god, why do I need an idol? Because if your idol is not God, you need something to represent him in your life. Me, me, right? I'm going to tell y'all this much. Sometimes when you get a blessing that you cannot comprehend and it's too big for you, what you will do is smother it. Either you won't appreciate it or you appreciate it too much. You will smother it. No, no, not the person you smother. Not God. You smother the blessing. Because I've never had anything, so I've never had anyone, I've never had anything. So the moment I get the taste of not even a person, I get the taste of something that looks like what I should have gotten when I was young, I smother it. And then I lose it. Cycle. It's just been my cycle. I lose it. Or I lose them. Or I lose that. Or I lose what I got. I smother it. picture right because he is the unsmotherable God he's the unsmotherable gift right and so if you have God you have all you need and anything you need he will supply and give you and he will not let you what smother it and I end up in a lot of pain I know a lot of people don't want to be around me and a lot of people don't want anything to do with me. Not necessarily on the opposite because I won't walk away. Like Samantha is just gorgeous so she can just do whatever she wants. She'll take advantage of anything and just push you aside and does not care, right? So it's, that's not me, right? I'm that type of person where I will hug you and love you and cuddle you and cuddle you and feed you so you can't breathe. Because you gave me a drip of love. 
And because I lose everything, I don't want to lose you. Smother. It's a new thing to do. Smothering. <laughs> I'm gonna PSA for it. Smothering. Do it. And then one of my pastors, his wife, had to have surgery. And so when I found out, I'm mean, out like, oh, I want to do something. Uh. But I, I wanted to text him and text him and text him and text him. Are you okay? Do you want some chicken? Um, I, 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 you want to come do your hair? What do you want? I made your painting. He's like, Jim, you're going to be out of town. <laughs> so, I, said, I said, fine. I'm going to put it in your office. But it never made it to his office. Because I'm going to see him Wednesday. It's my smother. Right? That's why for me because of nothing that I got because I hold on to. Like I even when I, people gave me things, those took my those would pay for my yearbook or any of my high school things. And then when I got them, I had to have three jobs. I worked as a teen health educator and leader for Planned Parenthood. Um, we did plays and I was yeah, we did plays. I always played the better woman, right? And then I, I was uh, um, I was uh, 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 I worked at the museum. Mm -hmm. And also worked at the law offices of Swirsky Swirsky. I was a file clerk. Now, working all those jobs wasn't that hard. Because I didn't want to be in the house with Lois. I mean, after coming from science high school, going to work, it was not that hard to work all those jobs. What was difficult was keeping my schedule together. Same thing I have a problem with now. Keeping my schedule together. Because Melanie called me like, Jamie, where are you? I'm ready. I'm, oh, I've got Victoria. Jamie! Oh, put your down to sleep again. I'm on my way. You know, keeping my schedule together. Every good and perfect kid comes from above, right? As it comes from the Father of Life, and no one knows the whole scripture, I don't. But I think every good and perfect, good and perfect gift comes from above, right? Because I know the Father of Light gives it to me. I know he's the Father of Light. I know there is no uh, my, my moon uh, light and the, the, the earth ain't the light, even though uh, the, the uh, mirrors and Western want to tell you he is. But there's one thing, right, that I got recently, right? And God opened my eyes, he wants to open my eyes to something, he said, Jamie, he showed me what the show yesterday, he said, Jamie, do you see her? He's like, she has friends, she's everywhere, she is not in her father's face all the time. They see, they, they're the family, they see each other. But if something is given to you, you do not have to lock onto it, right? If something is given to you, like I have a tree outside my house, I have a lock on to go hunt the tree right now, cut it down, and go make an idol out of it. Obviously, idol worship came from her. Obviously. Because Abraham was the earth, with the earth of the Chaldees, right? Earth of the Chaldees, right? But it was the Chaldeans that took, uh, 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 that killed, I think, took the camels from Job's house. And Job, I know you see the place in the Bible, but Genesis, Abraham, and Job, Job happened at the same time. So could Abraham, some of Abraham's friends or men have gone to Job's house and taken his stuff? 